The first thing we want to address, however, is what am I moving into? Right now, my streams are open, locally developed, college, excuse me, applied and academic. When you move into the senior grades, ladies and gentlemen, our streams slash levels change. You're now going to be looking at course codes, that fifth digit, and you're either going to see a U, an M, a C, an E, or an O, and we are familiar with the O's, <clears throat> excuse me. U for university, C for college, E for employment workplace. Let's go back up to that M. M we loosely refer to as mixed courses because it is a combination of university and college curriculum. The pace, the delivery of the course will combine both philosophies and a lot of these courses will be courses that you will be able to use if applying to university down the road when you take them in grade 12. Make sure you choose the correct stream level. So just as is indicated at the bottom of this sheet, if you're selecting university level courses for next year, you should be coming out of the D course code, the academic level. If you are moving into college level classes, you would typically be moving out of the P applied level classes. M courses are open to most students studying in both the academic and the applied courses in grade 10. And then finally, our E replaces our L for locally developed. Now, these are our students who are planning to leave school and go right into that workforce, hence E for employment workplace. Where do you find the information, ladies and gents, on your grade 11 courses? Well, we most of us have had conversations in the past year about accessing your MyPath account. Everyone knows at this point how to do it, whether you log in through my site or selecting uh, the course offerings through the pathtosuccess.ca website. And as indicated with that little scoopy black arrow, when you get to the front page of the Path to Success site, collect, or excuse me, select course offerings, and then you'll slide down a little bit further and you'll be able to, to select from the actual schools in which you are attending, say Thomas More Catholic Secondary School for all of us. And then it'll take you to the, the page which you're looking at on the right. You can do it either on a desktop or on your phone. Make sure that you log in and use your personal password. Then all these funky pages are accessible to you. As I mentioned, you're going to be able to find the St. Thomas More school listed and then you're going to click. The cool thing is, is all of the departments that we offer activities, courses through will come up. My suggestion has been and will continue to be research every department. We have so many new courses that are being offered this upcoming year, but also as grade 10s, you haven't been privy to the number of electives that you're going to have this year and therefore familiarize yourself with all of the courses in each of the departments that we offer. Find the course under the grade 11 heading and click on a course that you're interested in. Then you'll have an opportunity to read the description and the most important thing is to ensure that that course that you may be interested in has or does not have a prerequisite and you must follow those rules. Required courses for grade 11 on your option advice sheet that is addressed in question number three. In grade 11, you only have three compulsory credits that need to be earned. And this is with the assumption that you are on track 
You have not failed any courses that would be considered compulsory. Otherwise, we need to make up for those through summer school or in first semester of grade 11. And then the fun thing is you get five elective courses. Now back to the compulsory, religion, English, math. Math gets tricky, as if it wasn't already. What math should you take? Firstly, I don't expect you to do this all on your own. We want you to talk to your math teachers. They're there with you every day. They see your performance. They will advise you best. But we've got some descriptors. The U-bound math, MCR3U1, is a functions math. It is typically for students who plan to head into university for engineering, a commerce business program, the sciences, kinesiology even, depending on where you are applying. College-bound students, we actually have a couple different maths for you. There's also a third one that isn't indicated there, which is MBF3C1 for college-bound students. You may also take the mixed course, or if you are planning to pursue a trade, a skilled trade, you want to get into technology at the college level, then you have the College for Technology Math, MCT4C. Okay? And then let's skip down to our employment bound students who just love math. You can study MEL3E1. We need three maths in order to be eligible to graduate, ladies and gentlemen. Are you on track, as I just asked? Go to your credit counseling summary in your MyPath account, look at the dashboard, and ensure that all the credits that you expect to be on there earned are there. If you studied something with a different school board in the summer, at night, prior to coming to uh, grade nine even, ensure that that credit is there. If it isn't, make an appointment and we can track that credit down. Some students are interested in reaching ahead. And although it sounds ambitious and positive, you have to be sure that you have the intangible skills to move forward. Grade 11 is a very stressful time in your career as a student only because the workload does increase, ladies and gentlemen. And although you may feel like you need to be in a hurry to finish, Slow down, slow down, enjoy the ride. So the Ministry of Education requires, this is really important for you to keep in mind, what we refer to as full disclosure of all grade 11 and grade 12 marks. Every attempt that is made at earning these credits from grade 11 on will be disclosed to any schools that you apply to post-secondary. So you don't want to just jump on that fast tracking train without possessing the study skills and the work habits. We have lots of time for you to earn the credits that you need and prepare for your post-secondary pathway. Okay, that is the most important thing. Slow down. Speaking of pathways, now's the time. Do you need to know what you want to be doing when you are my ripe age of less than 50? <laughs> um, no, you don't. But you should know what you're interested in. You should have an inkling of whether you want to head down an apprenticeship pathway, uh, whether you want to study at the university level, and, and furthermore. So I've got listed here the four different destinations that you should be at least considering while choosing your courses. I do also want you to understand that none of this is etched in stone, ladies and gentlemen. If you make selections and then you have a, a change of plans, you make an appointment and we can make these changes. We don't want you feeling stressed out. We need to work towards making our selections, mapping out our pathways, but we are here to help and if changes need to be made, then we make them. 
It's really important, however, in our planning that we start to investigate requirements for post-secondary. So there is an incredible site that you should hop on now, not now, you're listening to me, but soon in, in preparing for your courses, Ontario University's info.ca is, you know, it's, it's an incredible resource. I love referring to it. Every course, every program that you might be interested in studying in Ontario is listed in one site. Take your time, peruse through it, make an appointment, we can talk about it. Grade 10 academic courses are the prerequisites for you courses. Also keep in mind, if university is the pathway you want to follow, there will be a minimum requirement of six grade 12 U level or M courses uh, that you need to be successful in, in order to be eligible to apply to university. And look down below in that red. I don't usually like to highlight things in red. However, it is important that we remain realistic in our planning. Take your best courses right now, add them up, simple math, divide them by however many courses that you are, are considering and ask yourself, am I averaging at least a 75% in these academic level courses? And that's the question you have to continue to ask yourself as you move forward. College requirements, again, look at that red highlighted a website, ontariocolleges.ca. It is the exact same thing, but for college-bound students, incredible information that will tell you every admission requirement, including the courses, the specific courses you should be studying by the time you graduate. We have collaborative programs with local universities, which is really interesting and um, important for you to consider. So. Although you may be planning to go to college, but you're still thinking, ah, maybe I want, maybe I want a university experience as well. Well, these courses, these programs at the college level work tightly with universities and you, you actually will work on both campuses in order to earn your diploma slash degree. And yes, there are transition and transfer opportunities for students who start at a college destination but are interested in furthering their education. You can take what you've learned and earned and apply it to university. It's imperative that you plan properly. And we, again, do not expect you to do it on your own. Ask questions. I love the students that show up in our office with a list of questions, whether it's on your phone, whether it's on a piece of paper. You are showing us the skills that you need to be successful in the senior grades. Check your IPP that you developed in your career cruising site and, and program in your careers course this year. Start by planning your post-secondary destination by working backwards. So I refer to the college and the university websites. Peruse those. Check out what those admission requirements are. Oh, I didn't know I needed a physics. When do I take physics? Oh, I need it for grade 12 and I'm university bound. I need a grade 11 course as a prerequisite. You need to start doing that now. Work backwards. It is the best way for you to plan efficiently. And then if you're changing your pathway, as indicated at the bottom of this slide, it can be done. It's going to be a lot of work for you. Some additional courses you may have to take, but it can be done. We have seen it and we have seen it accomplished successfully. There is a personal planning chart that you should have on your advice sheet. Move over to the grade 11 section. Notice the five electives that you get to fill in. So take your time and fill those in and ask questions. I have the most lovely guest with me who is going to speak to you a little bit about our SHISM, Specialist High Skills Major Program, and maybe he will also allude to some uh, where co-op fits in with, with your SHISM destination. Without further ado, I introduce you to 
Mr. S. Silvestri. Thank you, Ms. Vesprini. Um, just going to touch a little bit about the SHSM program. As you see on the slideshow, we have six different sectors available here at STM. So if you're interested in pursuing studies or uh, work related occupations to any of these sectors, so there are arts and culture, business, construction, health and wellness. And health and wellness includes not only healthcare, but fitness and child and family services. You have the nonprofit sector and the transportation sector. Okay, so, and again, doesn't matter what your pathway is for post-secondary. If it's gonna be university, college, trades, directly into the workplace, you're eligible for SHSM. And the way we've set it up is that all the course at the different levels that Ms. Vesprini talked about, whether it's uh, a C or U or M or E or O, they will all count towards this SHSM program. So it's not a separate course that you take, but the courses that you're taking throughout high school by the time you graduate, we'll take a look at that bundle of credits and you've got to take, it's between eight to 10 credits, depending on which sector. But I'll tell you which ones you have to take. Co-op for two credits is part of the program. A lot of students will take co-op in grade 11, some will take it in grade 12. Again, depending on your planning, again, you're gonna look forward to what are you gonna do after high school? What do you need in grade 12 and work backwards? See where that co-op fits in. Again, co-op teacher probably talked to you guys in your career studies class, um, but if not, it's two credits, so it's usually mornings or afternoon, and you would be in school for the other half day, okay? So for a specialist high skills major program, the ministry realized that this is so important for students to get skills, to get some experience outside the class setting that they make it require a requirement for all sectors. And hopefully you get a placement that will relate to the interest, the field of interest you have, the sector you're going into. Okay. Besides that, you still need English all the way to grade 12, so grade 12 English is one of those uh, credits that make up the bundle of credits for SHSM. Math, for just about all of these, you need grade 11 math. But again, a lot of you will be taking grade 12 because you will need that. And then they will have what they call major courses. And it's usually four major courses that relate directly to that field, that sector. And then one other course that's related usually to that sector. So if you're and at least one course of those have to be, of the major courses have to be grade 12. The other ones can be grade 11. If you're taking a grade 11 course this year, that and it's part of the bundle of credits, it would still, it would still show up as part of the bundle you've completed. Okay? And yeah, it's not too early to register. It officially starts when you're in grade 11. But if you're interested in one of these fields and you know you're going to take co-op, whether it's in grade 11 or grade 12, uh, you can see me or email me, Sylvestri S at hwcdsb.ca. We do have a letter of intent. Again, that would summarize the different components of the SHSM program. We have a brochure. The brochure is also available online at the school and board website that will describe more. Uh, and don't be afraid because they list a whole bunch of different courses that you can take. And you don't have to take all those courses and you don't have to take them in both grades. It's gonna be from that group that you can select the courses that are applicable to you. And again, it's four or five of those courses. Okay, so, um, and uh, Miss mentioned the re grade 11 religion is required for you to take. That one will actually be one of the courses that count for the bundle of credits for four of the sectors that we offer. So the arts and culture, business, health and wellness, and nonprofit, you're already gonna be taking uh, one of those automatically. And again, we don't want you to sign up for SHSM and change the courses that you're gonna take. We wanna see that the SHSM complements your path and the courses that you're taking will fit. And then if there's one or two little adjustments that you can make that you would have been short, then make the changes, okay? But the main thing is to get all the courses that you require to graduate, get all the courses you need for uh, post-secondary, and then we can work with the SHSM. 
And I'm just going to mention, uh, again, besides the courses, they do want you to have some cert certifications and training, which will include CPR, first aid, and WMIS for all the sectors. And then each sector will also have some specific uh, training that is required and a whole list of different elective trainings that you can choose from. And it might be two, three, or four from that long list. Most of that uh, training and certifications will be accomplished by the time you finish your co-op semester okay because we know that there's a lot of it that will be there we'll offer you opportunities to complete the cpr and first aid during that co-op semester we are trying to offer both daytime cpr and first aid training as well as after school training for cpr uh, some of the other certifications you will get from your classes that you're taking at high school and some of them will be at your co-op placement that you'll receive and some before going to your co-op placement. Some of you are also receiving some of the certification from jobs or volunteering. Um, I know when I talk to grade 10, some of you already have CPR and first aid because uh, especially through lifeguarding. Okay, so that's the package of certifications, trainings, uh, credits. And there's one other certification which we call ICE Training, Innovation, Creativity, Entrepreneurship. That's usually a one day training session but last year and this year, they've offered uh, computer virtual presentations and then students will do some activities on their own and submit those. Okay, so hopefully next year that'll return to face-to-face -face as well. Again, if you complete all those requirements by the time you graduate, your diploma will have a red seal that says Specialist High Skills Major on it. And again, we you would get, because uh, it's an official program, you'd get uh, official transcript that it shows the information on it and you can get an SHSM record card when you leave high school that will show all the courses you completed as well as certifications and training that have been added to the record for you. Okay. And we also want to recognize that at graduation. So in the past we've had students wear um, an SHSM uh, sash that, uh, will, that you recognize and also put it in the program that you've completed the SHSM program. So just a little bit of acknowledgement of accomplishment. Okay. If you have other questions, you can also book an appointment with me, the same way you do with guidance, but it's for SHSM. And again, if you want to email me, it's sylvestris at hwcdsb.ca. Thanks very much. Thanks, miss. Thank you, sir. Wonderful news. Awesome. And a lot of you have already asked about um, schism and how co-op relates to it. So I look forward to seeing a number of you sign up. We only have a couple more um, slides left. So let's address just the, the very end of this presentation. What are your requirements for registration? <clears throat> Firstly, we are not collecting anything at the school. So I'm encouraging you to print off, make copies of the uh, MyPath option sheet that you've created in your MyPath account as you select your courses and add those courses to your backpack. You will finish off and complete that, that backpack with eight courses or six courses plus co-op because co-op is a two credit course. And so it would account for two courses in your selection process. With your MyPath option sheet, please keep a copy because if there are any questions that you have, you can bring that in with you. The activity fee as has in past practice as well is $45 and it must be paid through cash on school cash online. You must do that and please again print a receipt so that you again can confirm payment if there are any issues with finding that information on our end. Your last day to register is the end of this month, March 31st. You will have all of March break to take your time and make selections. And please don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, we can make revisions, but we need to empower you to make these decisions through great research. That is the end of my presentation. 
if, again, if you have any questions, any concerns, mom, dad, guardian, yourself, please make an appointment with myself as the grade 10 guidance counselor, or if anyone else is listening with your own guidance counselor to discuss all of your concerns. Today is a great day, STM, and let's make it great for our neighbors. You are loved, you are loved.